in the last video, we learned how to ask questions about time. Here, we're going to learn the vocabulary and grammatical patterns that allow us to answer these questions. There isn't any audio to this, so I'm going to read out loud. Hiatsu na tia ainuk. Hiatsu na tia ainuk. I go today. Hiatsu na tia ainuk. Hiatsu na tia ainuk. I'll go today. Hia yatsu na tia ainuk. Hia yatsu na tia ainuk. I went today. Hia yatsu na kuya ainuk. Hia yatsu na kuya ainuk. I went today. I will go tomorrow. I will go tomorrow. I went yesterday. I went yesterday. And he ats in a qui stiknat. He ats in a qui stiknat. He ats in a qui stiknat. I went the day before yesterday. Most time expressions begin with the preposition a. The word for I nuke today is usually preceded by the article tia, which means this. If the event occurs earlier today, that is, in the past, but still today, quia may be used in place of tia. The word quachi means next day, and it's related to squachi for day and quache, morning. When quachi is used with the article chi, it always means tomorrow. The word chiak, yesterday, and not the day before yesterday, are always preceded by the article qui. In the questions video for when, on time questions, we learned that a future event is preceded by the article chi. The article qua or qui is usually used if the event is in the past. The same is true in any time expressions except for atia ainuk, today. And notice that the future word sa is optional with tomorrow, and the past word ya is optional with yesterday. Here's a Konawi. Hiatsanaki Ainuk. Hiatsanaki Ainuk. Hiatsanaki Ainuk. Hiatsanaki Ainuk. Hiatsanaki Now we're moving on to time of day. Okay, I will go at two. Hiatsanaki Chessa. Hiatsanaki Chessa. How about I go at two? About the time you do something. And I went at two o'clock. Yeah, and I went at the past. Yeah, and I went some clown speakers use Tintin where English uses o'clock. So, for example, I go at two o'clock would be Hiatsu na Chichessa Tintin. The clown use for the word for o'clock comes when sailors use a phrase such as two bells to mean two o'clock. In English, the o'clock is optional. The same is true in clown with Tintin. So, one may say Hiatsu na Chichessa Tintin. I will go at two o'clock. Or Hiatsu na Chichessa. I will go at two. The time is given as a number, just as in English. Here are the column numbers 1 through 12, in case you haven't gotten these memorized yet. 1. Netza. Netza. 2. Chessa. Chessa. 3. 3. 4. Moose. Moose. 5. Scotch. Scotch. Six. Hang. Hang. Seven. Socks. Socks. Eight. Pats. Pats. Nine. Pack. Pack. Ten. Open. Open. Eleven. Open it in that Open it in that Twelve. Open it in Chessa. Open it in Chessa. For 11 and 12, the G is optional, so upini netsu and upini chesa are good also.
If you're just counting 11 or 12 things, upin natsu and upin chesa are good too without the e. To add am or pm to this, you have to add a phrase, achi kwache in the morning for am and achi tagen in the evening for pm. Keep in mind that here, as elsewhere, chi is used for future times, while kui is used for past times. So hia tenachi tang ting tenachi kwache would be I go at six o'clock in the morning. And then hia tenachi tang ting tenachi tang in. I go at six o'clock in the evening. To add minutes after the hour, use e to conjoin the minutes to the number of the hour. So for I go at nine ten, it would be hia tenachi tak i ubin. For half pass, use ash chach. And for quarter pass, use ash kwata. So, for example, 6.30 is chang i chi ash chach. And for 6.15, it would be chang i chi ash kwata. And the quinaui? Hang i no chi hiat. Hiat just a chi tzoks. Tzoks a chi kwati. Oh, so, so, she tongue. Now we're on sometime, always, and long ago. Hiatsu na chi u chin tang. I'll go sometime. Or hiatsu na chi u chinash. I always go. And hiatsu na chi kheats. I went long ago. The word for sometime is chin tang. Does this word look familiar? Because if not, you should review the where video. When used to mean sometime, it must have the u prefix. The word for always, u has the word u prefix. The root of the word is chen, all, and it has a suffix ash, which means times. Klom has words that mean once, twice, three times, four times, and so on. Just as in English, there are special words in Klom for once and twice. To make these word meaning three times and higher, you put the ush suffix on the end of the number word. The suffix always takes the stress so that the vowel of the root of number words usually drop out. Here's a list of one through four. Mitzah, Tsinzang, Shwash, and Nisash. It is possible to use the ash suffix on numbers higher than four, but native speaking elders think it sounds a little odd. To use these times words in sentences, just follow the model for always. For example, piatsen akwi ushwash. I went three times. The word for long ago is kheats. This word has the root heats, which means long time, and the root can be used by itself in sentences such as heats done, I'll be a long time. The prefix means basically already. This has a very useful prefix that can be put on just about any verb to add the already meaning. So study this following sentences. Hia yatsen, I went. And for it to say I already went, you would put hia yatsen. So I ate would be ishen yatsen, and I already ate would be ishen yatsen. And the quinaui. And for never. I didn't go. Out since here. Out since here. I never go. Out since here. Out since here. You never go. The first model should be very familiar. It shows the basic negative constructions that we learned in the negative words video. So take a minute and review that construction. Awa isn't followed by the negative C, as in the basic negative construction, but by a subordinate clause preceded by qua. Clauses beginning with qua are introduced in the conjunction video. 
and will be covered in more details later on. So remind yourself how qua works in the or constructions. In clauses beginning with qua, the following word will always have one of the subordinate subject suffixes. The subordinate subject suffixes were introduced in the subordinate subject video and covered again in the conjunction video for and with, but without, and or. The table below compares the main clause subject to the subordinate subjects. The main subject would be sin and your subordinate subject suffix would be un. So for we, it'd be us, you, a, uh, and he, she, it, be us. The main clause subjects were covered in transitive and intransitive verb videos. So remember that the he, she, it third person subject ends with an S for a transitive verb. But this symbol means there is nothing for the intransitive verb. This is not the symbol. There is nothing there. In the never construction, the first word is always awa, followed by the intransitive main clause subject. There may also be another speech art particle, such as past or future, or the second person pluralizer, hi, following the awa. Then after that, the negated clause follows, which is a subordinate clause beginning with qua. The one unusual requirement about this construction is that the subject has to be stated twice, once in the main clause and again in the subordinate clause. So study the models and you will see that each of these clauses has sentences translated with never. The subject is marked twice, except for, of course, the last one since the intransitive subject is blank. It is important to note that the two subjects, the main clause and the subordinate clause, must match a sentence like in the model Awat's in kwa hiyaen is okay and meaningful since sin and un are both first person singular for I. Something like Awat's in kwa hiyaen for the main clause has the first person subject sin for I and the subordinate clause has that second person subject ah for you. This is ungrammatical and makes no sense at all. And our last quinawi. I am in Archie Uhanahi. I am in two. I 